Last season, we watched James Martin walk away from an offer from Kevin O'Leary for his wine by the glass business, Copa de Vino. I'll buy 51% of it for $600,000. The opportunity is greater than that. I am going to go buy a $1,000 bottle of wine tonight, and I'm going to drink it because I'm weeping for the opportunity lost. Cheers. 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 He's a dead man walking, right. just <laughs> another deal. Let's see what he's up to now. You know, walking away from a deal from Kevin O'Leary was brutal. But at the same time, Kevin O'Leary only wanted the patents. He didn't see any value in the brand. We wanted to build Copa de Vino yeah. as a brand. Do you have those samples? I'm proud to say that Copa de Vino has gone to $5 million in sales in one year. Take this one to Chicago. Business is booming. We were some of the largest retailers in the world. Walmart, Ralph's, Kroger's, 7-Eleven, you name it, they want us. This way a little. Take it in, take it in, looking good. My company is growing so fast that we're putting all our revenue back into inventory. We need capital, we need capital fast. And that's why I'm going back. We kicked you to the curb. James, <laughs> you're still dead to me. Nice to see all of you. My name's James Martin, founder and CEO of Copa de Vino. I'm here today seeking an investment of $300,000 for 5% of my company. You may all recall Copa de Vino, wine by the glass, no corkscrews, no extra glasses, just open and enjoy. Last time I was here, I told you I would revolutionize the wine world. I just launched the concept, but I'd had over $500,000 in sales in the first six months. Well, this year, I'm on track to sell over $5 million in sales. In truth, I cannot keep up with demand. I literally have twice the amount of orders than I can produce. And to catch up, I have to build a second bottling line. And that is why I'm here today, to give you that elusive second bite of the apple. <laughs> we missed out on a perfect opportunity last time. Kevin, last time I was here, you told me you were gonna drink a $1,000 bottle of wine while weeping over the missed opportunity. Agonize no more, this time around, we're gonna make a deal. And to commemorate the occasion, I've bottled a $1,000 bottle of wine in my Copa glass. With your investment, we'll drink these together and we'll toast to the millions we'll continue to roll in. I ask all of you, please, take a second look at Copa de Vino and become my partners. Can you hear it? That's opportunity knocking. Again, last time you were stuck on the idea of taking a now proven technology and hoarding it for just yourself, when the real opportunity was to give the entire wine industry a license of this exact technology so that all wines could be sold this way. Instead of just making five million, you could make 500 million. And I wept like a child drinking a $2,000 bottle of wine realizing I was unable to help you out of your madness and your insanity. Have you repented? <laughs> <laughs> what was the offer you walked away from last time? Last time I was here? It was my offer. You offered $600,000 for 51% of the IP and the patents. And you know what? I said it was a great deal. It was even more than I would have offered. You screwed up. You guys have great memories. James, what are you drinking to come back here? You know we're not gonna be as gentle and as tender as we was last time to you. I don't remember gentle when I was here last <laughs> time. <laughs> that oh, was dude, gentle. Great. I do remember someone standing here and, and professing the value of the brand, and now I see someone standing in front of you that's proven the value of the brand. And the value of the patents that you're really interested in are now much more valuable. Uh, look, look, when I last saw you, I said you were a dead man walking and you were dead to me. Now, are you a ghost or are you real? You know what? I bottled a $1,000 bottle of wine 
so you and I could go ahead and put the past in the past. In the decision to bottle this, I created a name for you for this wine. I call it <laughs> the Dead Man Walking. <laughs> <laughs> this is for you, buddy. I like it, James, but I want to ask you a question that's gonna help set you free. What if we could take the technology to the largest three players in the wine industry and license it to them? You keep doing what you're doing because mm -hmm. you love it. You'll pay me a royalty of which you'll get 49%, mm -hmm. and I will quadruple your net worth in two quarters by simply taking this to people that have distribution 50 times larger than you. And every time they sell something, you'll make money. So we're right back to the original offer. Yep. Of course it is, because it's the right thing to do. If my memory serves me correctly, you passed out some wine the last time. Yeah. You know, try, try passing wine out this easily with any other brand. There you go. I'm waiting for the good Wait stuff. I wasn't interested last time, and I just want to be thoroughly entertained while you go back and forth with these guys, so I'm out. Thanks for the wine. James, I don't want to do battle with you anymore. I want to figure out how to do business with you, because I want to drink that good wine, not the swill Barb is drinking. <laughs> I'd like to figure out, how can I invest in the piece that has the real value? Because wineries are a labor of love, and you are in love. I hate that business. I love the packaging business you have. You have a huge global opportunity, and I so much want to be your partner in that. Look. I have a better understanding than I did last time, but I'm still not comfortable that a $6 million valuation, even with the marginal value of the intellectual property, is worth the investment. You need to start telling us that you're negotiable on the equity portion. Very well said. I, I agree that we are here to negotiate. I think it's really important for you to take some of the information that I have more seriously that I, I at this point, am an expert. No one in, in the world today knows wine by the glass in the marketplace like I do. I agree. So what's it gonna take? What are we gonna do here? Give, give me a chance to explain the valuation, okay? Most national brands, which we are becoming, sell for two and a half to three times the gross dollar value. When you just sell a brand and it yet. shifts over you're not to- there yet. You're not there yet. When you're, will you're, I be there? Look, one you're not, more year. No, no. But you're not. James, you know, when you just came in here again, I was happy to see you for some reason. Like, oh, like an old friend. Mm. And he got a new haircut. <laughs> but as I'm listening and listening, I'm having the same visceral reaction to you. For some reason, and I hope you take it well, I didn't like you then, and I don't like you now. But take it well. But I don't know where that's coming from. I just have to say, I'm out. I'm not arguing that you see it at $6 million, but you have to see that we see it at something less. Potentially, there's somewhere in the middle that we can meet, but we're asking you to start to move the needle and start to move the valuation so that we can respond. Normally, we don't do that. Normally, we say, you know what? We're just gonna tell you, but you know what you're doing. You're very aware of your industry. You're very aware of the components of your business. So we're asking you. It sounds like you guys have an interest in this, right? If we can work on evaluation, we may be able to make a deal here. Which correct? I've been saying for a long time. <laughs> You've tortured me so long, I'm gonna put an offer out anyways. I'll do the $300,000 for 12%, because that's exactly what you're worth right now. So you're saying the company's worth two and a half million dollars today? That's exactly what it's worth. You have something of tremendous potential here, globally. At some point, I know I'll be able to convince you to set it free. And you'll make so much money, you can kick back on the Copa hillside and say, Kevin O'Leary was right. I'm so lucky to have him as a partner. That's what's going to happen. And my ticket to entry is $300,000. All right, you beat me into a pulp. Give me the good stuff. I can't take this anymore. Before you make a decision, I'm going to try to change his mind on something. Do you have anybody you can call, you know, or got to go to the bathroom or anything? I do have someone to call. Go make your phone call, because okay. we need a moment. All right. Okay? okay? Thank you. 12% isn't a whole lot of skin in the game. That's my problem. That's my issue with it. Right, that's my problem. I think we offer him more money at a slightly lower valuation among three of us 
I like it. So we get more equity, more in the upside, right? Why not try for 30 marks? We'll get 10 each. I don't think you'll go for it, but we but can try negotiate. that. I think they're not appreciating. You've got a proven technology, a proven product, you've proven there's a market. And when I started Sam Adams, everybody thought it was a dumb idea and nobody would invest. And I only got like low ball offers. And look where Sam Adams is today. The passion will take you a long way. Watch what he does when he comes back. He's going to be complicated again. James, who did you call? I called Jim Cook. He's the founder of Samuel Adams. He's basically the, the father of craft brewing in America. And Jim's been instrumental in, in bringing my company to this level. What did he say to you? Jim basically wanted to make sure that whoever I'm becoming a, a partner with, that they share in the dream, they understand the vision, they understand the possibilities. Is he an, uh, an investor in the company or an equity owner in the company? Jim's an advisor. An advisor, he doesn't have any equity in No all. equity. Then why didn't he just give you the money for your extra line that you need? The best advice is gonna come from someone who's not vested in your company. You know, I really respect Cook. He's a legend in the beverage industry, no question. But he's not spending his money right here. So what did he tell you to do with the 300000 for 12% that Kevin offered you? You know, uh, basically, it's, it's half the price of what the value of, of my company is. And he, he recommended that if I'm interested in trying to have a partner as established as Mark Cuban, that it would be valuable to me to pay additionally above what I'm asking for for an investment of 3%. So 300000 for 8% of the company. That's your counter. That's my counter. Mark Cuban's not interested in that. And tell me why, Mark. Because it's not enough skin in the game. Because you want the value of the Sharks and what we bring to the table. And that's an effort, mm -hmm. right? Just like you've created a valuation, yeah. we have our own valuations of our time and our effort as well. And what I'm saying, it's just not worth it. What I suggested and they agreed with was that we need to get significant skin in the game, but it's worth putting in more money to get it. So what we suggested was $600,000 for 30%, because that's $200,000 a piece, 10% equity a piece, three rock stars to help support you and build your brand, and you still retain 70%, so you get significant amounts of leverage, and you have the capital, should you need it, to expand into other product lines to fund your growth. Twice the money you came here looking for. I agree that having more skin in the game makes a lot more sense for you guys. I agree that that could be a greater value and asset to my company. Does it get us a deal in the stadium next year in the Dallas Mavericks? It gets you first crack. I can't make a promise just because we have a service organization that I have to go through. But when we were talking, you know, I own the Landmark Theaters and quite a few of them sell alcohol and single serve wine and the bigger theater serving alcohol makes perfect sense. Yeah. Why can't be... You're talking yourself out of a sale. You need to make a decision. Don't do this again, James. James, you've done something nobody in the tank has ever done. You've been given the American dream to come back. Who's, who's in on this? Is you, you, and you? Yes, sir. All three. Kevin, if I get that phone call from you all the time that says, we've got to split this company up. No, James, Mark and I will keep Kevin in line. Don't worry. You've convinced me from the very get-go because you went from 500,000 to 5 million and then 12 million next year. You were right about that concept. You need to make a decision right now on what you want to do. I want to be partners with you guys. But if I trade my company, 30% for $600,000 and, and basically give my company at that kind of discount and I don't have any kind of guarantee that I, I can even get into, uh, you know, the single stadium that you control, then I'm in a position where I'm trying to understand what kind of value that you might be adding. Then you just have to decide. Whoa, 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 whoa. James, you wouldn't have come back here if you didn't see value in the tank in us. So don't ask us to start selling ourselves back to you now. You're the one that came back. We're not, we didn't go see you. No more talking. We made a very fair offer to you. You've got to make a decision. It's a million dollar bottle of wine. 30% <laughs> of the company, 
That should go for $1.2 million, and I'm going to sell it for $600,000. I don't think you're thinking clearly on that. Well, hang on. Whoa, 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 Kevin. I think he's saying yes. What are you saying? James, let me drink one of those with you. Kevin, In celebration Kevin. of the deal. James, what are you saying? I'm out. You know what? I'm out. You screwed around. You're playing games, and there's nothing I hate more than playing games. You knew the number. You knew the number when you walked out. You knew the number when you walked in, and you came in and created drama. That no. Makes I came in looking to make partners with you at a very reasonable valuation that was done by experts. Not by someone that says, well, I, I, I see what the wine industry is, my friends have wineries. These are the top experts in the country who've told me what my company's worth. But none of them gave you any money. You know as well as we all do that it's worth what someone will pay for it. I'm just telling you, James, I'm out. Robert, Kevin, you yeah, guys well, gonna split you know, it? James, I I'm, I'm really out. I mean, you just came here to waste our time. So, cheers. I'm sorry, but I think I've earned this. <laughs> I came here in good faith, really wishing for these sharks to become my partners. No one could share in that vision. It was all about the money and whether they could get a discount on the value of my company. I won't be back. Before you go, don't forget to subscribe to the Shark Tank YouTube channel and click on that notification bell to keep up with everything that's bubbling in the tank.